Here's some feedback on your first exercise, but you'll notice that I'm using three terms here, not just to give you feedback on it, but an opportunity for you to reflect further and then to be able to take that as feed forward. It will be really good for us to get feedback from you all in class or online on the different ways of knowing about the particular subjects or topics you highlighted within your field of healthcare practice. So it's the different ways of knowing. That's what we're studying with epistemologies. How do we know what we say we know? And it's through studying the ways in which we construct our knowledge or the ways in which we identify what we know and we say we know that we can then see the impact on the ways of being. That's the ontology. So how do we expect people to be, for example, because of the ways in which we know? Here are a few examples that you might have thought about and especially when you bring in the different views from gendered perspectives and I'm using here a dyadic, uh, a dualist view, one or the other, female, male. When we apply the term intersectionality to all of this, we're looking at the crossroads from so many different angles. So you might be considering uh, the difference in social cultures or economic groupings of people. Um, or their religions, the language they speak. You can look at all these different aspects and how they interrelate and here apply it to differences in understanding of what it is to be a female or male. Because quite often it's the impact of being female or male in so many cultures around the world and even as those cultures move to our own country and to other countries, so our global village is here with us. It's the ways in which um, the gendered notions of being, ontology, um, actually relate to whether a person is given uh, equality of rights or discrimination against them. And that's a really pertinent topic to consider. Say, for example, if you're working with a, um, a patient or a client who's been the victim of domestic violence or abuse, uh, intimate partner violence, and so many people within society would say, well, why in heaven's name do you stick with that person? Um, why do you stay with the abuser? Now, trying to understand the why of that is part of our epistemological thinking. But when we're thinking critically, thinking epistemologically, we don't just consider this from one point of view, but look at the, uh, the other, the opposing point of view as well. How is it that males in so many societies can justify um, the, the fact that they're treated superior or they treat themselves superior uh, to females and to all other genders? And boiling this theoretical argument back down to a practical issue again, when we consider something like female genital mutilation, female genital cutting, how come that we take a certain approach to it when it's seen as FGM, but there's a totally different way of thinking about it if we're talking about designer vaginas, vaginoplasty, all that type of uh, cosmetic surgery done in richer countries? Why is there a difference? And another relevant question to ask here is even if we are just talking about dyadic gendered relationships, one or the other, male or female, then even in using that sort of language, who are we missing out? And what's the impact on the healthcare, uh, whether that's in preventative uh, uh, healthcare or access to treatment, discrimination within treatment for all those who do not identify as either male or female? Great, you've reached the end of this little feedback session and hopefully it's given you more to reflect on and then what you do is to take that forward and start thinking more now of applying that in the ways in which you think. So this reflective cycle is always ongoing for us. The more we gain new knowledge, the more we can develop on that knowledge by reflecting on our practice and moving it even forward yet again.